but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Israelites, everything you have learned so far was to lead to this chapter and any future chapters on spiritual warfare. Everything you have learned about breaking evil covenants to how to identify the devil or the worker of iniquity attacking you to decoding the symbols you see in the spirit realm leads to spiritual warfare. The question remains, what is spiritual warfare? According to the beast culture's definition, spiritual warfare is the Christian concept of fighting against preternatural evil forces. The workers of iniquity always have a way of Hellenizing the word of the Most High. Spiritual warfare is not a Christian concept. Anyone who wants to be free from spiritual bondage must engage in spiritual warfare. It doesn't matter your religious faith. Only the way the Most High say the fight against a devil will cause a devil to flee. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Spiritual warfare is not a Christian thing. There are workers of iniquity from all culture backgrounds. The Satans don't discriminate, nor does the unclean spirits. The Satans, the unclean spirits, and the workers of iniquity engage in spiritual warfare. The only people who have a hard time with spiritual warfare are the people who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They have been manipulated into believing Jesus has done everything for them. All the people who have accepted Baal as their Lord and Savior have legions occupying them because they have no knowledge about spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is not a religious concept. Spiritual warfare is war. Fighting against principalities and powers, against the dark powers of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places, just as the Most High has revealed to you in the scriptures. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Israelites, your warfare has always been with the principalities and dark powers of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places. Your issues was never flesh and blood. The workers of iniquity who fight you, they are using the dark powers of this world to attack you in the spirit realm. Religion is the first major attack against you spiritually. Religion is witchcraft and idolatry. When Israelites start looking at the world from a non-religious viewpoint, everything will begin to line up and make sense. The problem many Israelites and indigenous black people have is that they view everything from a religious lens. The time has come for you to rid yourself of the religious perspective. Step into spirituality. Religion is an attack against you. Religion is also the counterfeit of spirituality. Remember, Satan imitates everything the Most High does. That is how he was able to deceive the whole world. And a great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Israelites, spiritual warfare has nothing to do with your religious faith. Spiritual warfare is fighting against the dark powers of this world that is attacking you physically and spiritually. The only way you can see the enemy is through the spirit realm. It's in the spirit realm the dark powers of this world attack you. A lot of people lose the battle because they have no knowledge about the spirit realm. The Most High has changed your lack of knowledge about the spirit realm through this channel. Anyone who is serious about deliverance will engage in spiritual warfare often. If you have a glorious destiny or the Most High have a great anointing on your life, spiritual warfare is a part of your daily routine. If you're serious about your walk with the Father, you're not going to be afraid to stand your ground on the battlefield. 
Israelites, don't engage in spiritual warfare if you're not prepared for what is to come. If you don't have the mindset and the stamina to be the last one standing on the battlefield, don't engage in spiritual warfare. Don't play with your life like that. If you participate in spiritual warfare and don't know what you're doing, you may pay the ultimate price. Aaron's two sons paid the ultimate price when they offered strange fire to the Most High. And they dab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. When Uzzah's reflex kicked in and he touched the Ark of the Covenant, no mercy was extended to him. Uzzah held the Ark of the Covenant to keep it from falling. In the mix of him trying to do the right thing, he broke the laws of the Most High. Uzzah thought he would get a pass by not allowing the Ark of the Covenant to fall. He thought he was doing the will of the Most High, just like some Israelites believe they are doing today. Uzzah thought his act of righteousness would save him from the consequences. His act of kindness triggered the anger of the Most High. Uzzah paid the ultimate price. Only a Kohathite from the tribe of Levi could touch the Ark of the Covenant. Regardless of what Uzzah was trying to accomplish, the Most High don't play with his laws, statutes, and commandments. And when they came to Nachin's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the Ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. Uzzah wasn't the only one who disobeyed the Most High when he touched the Ark of the Covenant. King David knew the laws, and he didn't take the proper steps to make sure a Kohathite handled the Ark of the Covenant. In King David's great zeal to bring the Ark of the Covenant to the city of David, he sinned. King David was afraid when the Most High killed Uzzah on the spot. King David had his servants take the Ark of the Covenant to Obed-Edom and let it stay there for three months before he decided to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to the city of David. On his second attempt, King David made sure to follow the Most High's instructions. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertaineth unto him because of the Ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so, that when they that bare the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Israelites, don't let the kingdom of darkness deceive you to believe because you're an Israelite, the Most High will accept whatever offering you give to him. Let me remind you that the Most High is a holy God. Israelites, you better not give the Most High a lame sacrifice and expect him to deliver you. Your Israelite heritage is not going to save you. Following the statutes, commandments, and laws of the Most High will save you. There are countless stories of the Most High not accepting an offering from his people. We know that the Most High did not accept Cain's offering. On multiple occasions, the Most High did not help our ancestors after they fast. The scriptures reveal in the book of Isaiah how our ancestors said to the Most High, We afflict our bodies, but you don't acknowledge our sacrifice. The Most High said to the people that when you fast, you did whatever pleased you. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Israelites, to properly engage in spiritual warfare, you have to give the most high a sacrifice. There is no spiritual warfare without a sacrifice. Israelites, it's important that you know what kind of sacrifice please the most high before you engage in what you believe to be spiritual warfare. It's important that you spend time in the presence of the most high to prepare. You must take heed to the statutes and laws of the most high. 
just because you're the apple of his eyes, it doesn't mean the Most High is going to change his laws for you. Uzzah was an Israelite, as well as Aaron's sons, and the Most High had no mercy on them. Israelites, if you're going to engage in spiritual warfare, know what you're doing. If you don't, you can find yourself bound with heavier chains on your life or pay the ultimate price like Uzzah and the sons of Aaron. Don't let the spirit of pride lead you to engage in spiritual warfare just for you to lose the battle and the Satan's putting a stronger hold on your life. In addition, don't let the spirit of pride cause you to doubt the Most High when your offering is not accepted by the Most High. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? I am a big advocate of killing the devil or power working against you in the spirit realm before it manifests in the physical realm. Once it manifests in the physical, you now have to engage in spiritual warfare to be delivered from the power you gave to the enemy. Israelites, let's go deep. You just heard that in order to engage in spiritual warfare, you must offer the most high a sacrifice. All of our fathers in the scriptures offered the most high some sort of sacrifice. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mount. And they said, God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with a sword. Israelites, I really need you to listen. If the enemy brings religions, talking points about Jesus being the ultimate sacrifice and you no longer have to offer a sacrifice, please rebuke those thoughts. There is no spiritual warfare without a sacrifice. A sacrifice is like sealing the deal when it comes to spiritual warfare. Your enemies that practice witchcraft and sorcery attack you in the spirit realm. That is what witchcraft is, using the powers of devils to get what they want. The workers of iniquity have to give their idol god a sacrifice and perform rituals to get their heart desire from their idols. Most of the time, their idols require blood. The USA and many other countries around the world have a large population of missing people. Have you ever wondered why? A real life example I can share with you to bring this into perspective. COVID was a ritual blood sacrifice for the spiritual wickedness in high places. The workers of iniquity needed to give their idol God a blood sacrifice to keep their power. COVID shed a lot of blood. Whatever the workers of iniquity are seeking must have been massive. Because until this day, no one was held accountable for the deadly virus leaking from a lab. As a result, many lost their life and many other people's lives was interrupted. The sacrifice must not have been enough because the synagogue of Satan are planning another ritual attack that would shed even more blood. If you're shocked, this is warfare. The scripture said the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to the Most High. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Israelites, the other species of mankind serve their idol gods without a word. They are always giving their idols a sacrifice. Their corporations pay homage to their idols. The name of the days of the week to the name of the months are called after their gods. Pagans comprehend that if they want to stay in power and keep the indigenous black people down, they must serve their gods. The Israelites are the only group of people who fail to serve their God in the spirit and in truth. The Israelites will forsake the most high to serve strange gods. All other groups of people serve gods that look like them. The Israelites allow the workers of iniquity to manipulate them to believe they don't have to do nothing but believe. They've allowed the workers of iniquity to convince them that the laws are done away with. Pretty much every statute, law, and commandments our ancestors observed when they served the Most High was done away with when Jesus entered the picture according to their doctrines. How did we let a people the Most High don't know tell us about our God? You only 
have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. The other species of mankind through religion said, you no longer have to offer God a sacrifice because Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. Behind closed doors, they are doing everything they are telling you not to do for their idol gods. The workers of iniquity fast and pray to their idols. We see this throughout the various religious faith in the beast system. The heathens give their idols sacrifice through their witchcraft demonic rituals. Why do they continue to offer sacrifice if Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice? Israelites, the Most High is giving you the opportunity to return to him. I plead with you to return to the Most High and forsake the idols of the heathens. Too many Israelites are clueless when it comes to the Most High. Many Israelites actually believe the heathens when they say Baal has done all the work for them. If Jesus has done all the work for you, why are you still bound spiritually? The workers of iniquity have to give their idols a sacrifice. Your leaders are initiating you into their paganism to serve their gods. Obama initiated many into accepting marine spirits to his alphabet community legislations. After his presidency, the rise of marine spirits possessing many in the beast culture have increased tremendously. There's a lot of confusion behind gender and sexual orientation. Marine spirits are the cause. The Most High said, have no fellowship with devils. You cannot sit at the table with the Most High and at the table with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. The heathens are always serving and worshiping their idols. You and I can't get them to stop worshiping their idol gods. A lot of Israelites and indigenous black people allow the heathens to influence them to worship their idols. That is why the indigenous black people are in the conditions they find themselves in. They have forsaken the most high for idols. Therefore, they perish. Israelites, because we live here, there's a lot of warfare against us. We have no choice but to engage in spiritual warfare. As you heard, the heathens are always performing rituals and giving their idols a sacrifice. They do this via witchcraft and sorcery and religion. Israelites, when you engage in spiritual warfare, you must offer a sacrifice to the Most High. Your sacrifice is fasting. When you fast, you're inflicting your flesh so that your spirit, the real you, becomes strong. You need to strengthen your spirit for warfare. The word of the Most High strengthens your spirit. When you inflict your flesh by not eating food, your flesh becomes weak for your spirit to eat spiritual food, which is the word of the Most High to strengthen you for battle. The food we eat daily does not nourish our spirit. That is why the word of the Most High said, man does not live by bread only, but by the word of the Most High does man live. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. When you fast, it tames your flesh so that your spirit can rise. Israelites, you need your spirit to become strong for spiritual warfare. Remember, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Your flesh is useless to you when it comes to spiritual warfare. All the attacks against you from the workers of iniquity, the Satans and the unclean spirits are attacks against your spirit, not your flesh. When you see yourself interacting with devils in the spirit realm, that is your spirit engaging with unclean spirits. Your flesh body is here resting wherever you fell asleep while your spirit is in the spirit realm. When the curse or covenant began to manifest in the physical, that is when your flesh is affected. That is why it's important to destroy the covenant or curse in the spirit realm so that it doesn't manifest in the physical. Israelites, it's important that when you fast, you're in the word and spending time in the presence of the Father to nourish your spirit. When you fast and you're doing activities that entertain your flesh, like watching TV and playing video games, none of these things will nourish your spirit. Fasting and engaging in activities that please the flesh are the kind of sacrifice the Most High will not accept from you. You're afflicting your body for no reason. 
The Most High won't accept that kind of fast from you. Don't offer the Most High a bad offering. Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person? Saith the Lord of hosts. When you fast and you engage in activities that caters to your flesh, you're inviting demons to pollute your spirit. Watching demonic TV shows that are full of lust while fasting is not going to nourish your spirit, but give opportunity to devils to establish covenants. Be careful when you fast. Make sure you're nourishing your spirit when fasting. Your fast is the sacrifice you're offering the Most High in spiritual warfare. A lot of you believe the Most High will accept anything you offer him because of your Israelite heritage. Religion made the Most High appear to be a God that tolerates everything his people does. Israelites, don't play with the Father. The Most High is not playing with anyone. This is why I can't understand why there's no fear of the Most High in the awakening. A lot of Israelites say and do whatever they want. In their mind, they believe the Most High is cheering them on. The Most High will give you into your lust and put a strong delusion over you. The time has come for you to fear the Most High. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Israelites, let me remind you of Uzzah's fate when he touched the Ark of the Covenant. His transgression triggered the anger of the Most High and he died on the spot. Israelites, make sure you're giving the Most High a proper offering when you engage in spiritual warfare. Make sure your heart is perfect towards the Most High. A lot of people who don't properly fast find themselves sick after a fast and the Satans put a stronger hold on their life. Israelites, this is why I say know what you're doing when it comes to spiritual warfare. This is not a game. Spiritual warfare is for the people who are serious about deliverance and their walk with the Most High. Israelites, make fasting a part of your routine to strengthen your spirit to fight back. When your spirit is strong, you will begin to see yourself fight back in the spirit realm. When the spirit of poverty tries to rob you, you will see yourself fighting the spirit of poverty and win. You can only strengthen your spirit with the word of the Most High. The Most High gave several prophets in the scriptures, scrolls and books that had his words in them to eat in the spirit realm, to give them knowledge and to strengthen their spirit. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Majority of the attacks against you are attacks against your spirit. That is why a lot of Israelites fail to identify their enemies. A worker of iniquity can be your best friend or a member of your family, and he or she is attacking you in the spirit realm and you have no idea. Just because a person don't physically come up to you and attack you, it doesn't mean they're not against you or attacking you. They fight against you in the spirit realm. Israelites, the other species of mankind are attacking black people in the spirit realm. The spiritual wickedness in high places in the beast system made you believe they are your allies. A lot of the problems we have as a people, especially with the spirit of division, poverty, and self-hate are curses the workers of iniquity inflicting on black people via witchcraft. A lot of Israelites believe these people are their friends. Witchcraft give your enemies a way to conceal their identity while befriending and harming you. You have to have a relationship with the father for him to reveal your enemies to you. The scriptures did say a man's enemies are the members of his own household. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. 
Every Israelite know how to nourish their flesh. The time has come for you to nourish your spirit. Your spirit is the real you. Your flesh body is a suit that is housing your spirit in the physical realm. The stronger your spirit become, the harder it is for the Satans to deceive you and bound you spiritually. Praying is another part in spiritual warfare. Through prayer is how you communicate and make your petition known to the Most High. Through prayer, you're establishing covenants with the Most High to fulfill what his words say it would do. The words of the Most High will not return to him void. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Through prayer, you're asking the Most High to intervene and to deliver you from the workers of iniquity and unclean spirits attacking you. Through prayer is how you ask the Most High for what you need and what you want him to do for you. Make sure to get to the point when praying. Tell the Most High exactly what you want him to do. The Most High already know what's in your heart. It's best to be honest and get to the point. Prayer and fasting is the correct way to engage in spiritual warfare. Israelites, the reason I say to you to destroy the devil in the spirit realm before it manifests, when the evil covenant begins to manifest, you have to go through the process of deliverance. While you're seeking deliverance, you will experience the effect of the curse of the covenant being poured out unto you. Let's say you forge a covenant with the spirit of infirmity and the covenant begins to manifest in the physical realm. The spirit of infirmity will attach itself onto you and cause you to become ill. There's no escaping this from happening because you gave the spirit of infirmity permission. This is why you have to seek deliverance from the spirit of infirmity through spiritual warfare. The same goes for any unclean spirit that you give permission to oppress you. The Most High will honor all covenants. As long as the devil have permission, it will attach itself to you until you find deliverance. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Israelites, when it comes to spiritual warfare, know that the battles you're fighting is not always a battle that started with you. This is why I say to you that we are living on a battlefield. You have to keep that mentality. When the Most High gathered his people and put them back on their own land, we're no longer on the battlefield. At that point, our people have been redeemed. This generation of Israelites and many other generations prior lived in the land of their captivity and held as bondmen and bondwomen because of the sins of our fathers. The penalty for the consequences of our ancestors' sins, generational curses was put on our people for a sign. When dealing with spiritual warfare, you have to keep in mind the root cause to the battles. The root cause can come from your own personal sins, the perpetual hatred that comes from the serpent seed, and lastly, generational curses that comes from the sins of our fathers. The Most High will visit the iniquity of the fathers upon their children until the third and fourth generation. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. In order to destroy anything, you have to attack its root. The battle that comes from the sins of our fathers are generational curses that are on a family. To know if there's generational curses in your family, look at the patterns. For example, some families may have a generational curse of untimely death. You will see a pattern where each household have a person that died suddenly at an early age, or all the men in that family die at a certain age. For some household, it could be anti-marriage. All the women in that family are beautiful and good women, but no one wants to marry them. That is a generational curse of anti-marriage. Those are a few examples to help you find the patterns in your family. If you can't find any patterns in your family, you have to broaden your search and look into your bloodline. If you're an Israelite, you have several generational curses speaking against your life. One is living in the land of your captivity, as well as being called by bywords by your enemies. 
and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. The second root cause to the battles you're facing, the perpetual hatred the serpent seed have for you. The Most High said to the Satan Gadriel, who deceived Adam and Eve in the garden, that he would put enmity between his seed and the woman's seed. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Through the enmity the Most High put between the woman's seed and the serpent seed, the other species of mankind, as well as some indigenous black people who hate themselves, conspired against you to destroy you. The Satan said they will wage war with Adam and all of his seed to destroy them so that Adam would not have anyone to inherit the earth. Through the enmity the Most High put between the woman seed and the serpent seed, the indigenous black people are under attack from the other species of mankind. When you see the pattern of poverty, division, self-hate, strife, and many other negative things happening to black people everywhere they go, that is an attack against us collectively. These attacks come from witchcraft and sorcery being done to our people behind the scenes in religion, governments, secret societies, the heathens, corporations, and many other avenues. Due to the other species of mankind perpetual hatred, they conspired against us to cut us off from being a people. They have said, come. And let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. The final root cause to the battles that you face are your personal sins. I know this generation have a phobia on taking accountability and responsibility for their actions. It's always someone else's fault in this generation. It's difficult for many people to take responsibility for their actions. A lot of this stems from the programming from religion of having a Messiah that did all the work for them by taking their sins away. In addition, the workers of iniquity in high places did a good job of masking sin. Most people don't view sin in the correct perspective. Therefore, when you tell someone that their actions is sin, they will give you 101 reason unto why it's not. A lot of people don't know what sin is. Sin is breaking the laws of the Most High. We live in a society where religion have taught the people that the laws of the Most High are done away with. Some people don't know what sin is. However, that is not an excuse. The information is out here if you want to know the truth. Anyone who served the Father will know when they sin because they grieve the Spirit of the Most High that lives in them. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Your conscience will expose the sin to encourage you to repent. When you sin, you open the doors to the Satans and unclean spirits to enter your life to destroy you. If you're not repenting because you don't believe it's sin, you give the Satans permission to destroy you. Israelites, I know it's hard to believe that you're incapable of sinning because of your self-righteousness. The scripture said we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Father. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We must repent daily for our known and unknown sins. Israelites, you have battles coming against you from your own personal sins that opens the doors to devils, generational curses from the sins of our fathers, and the perpetual hatred that comes from the serpent seed. Israelites, regardless of the root cause, the process remains the same for spiritual warfare. Just because you have a pattern of infirmity in the form of diabetes in your family, it doesn't mean you have to live with the spirit of infirmity in the form of diabetes. This is where spiritual warfare comes into play. You pray and ask the Father to deliver you from the spirit of infirmity in the form of diabetes or whatever illness plaguing your family. Offer the most high a sacrifice through fasting for whatever amount of time you and the Father set. Repent of your sins. Close the doors that are giving the spirit of infirmity an opportunity to attack you. If the Most High accept your offering, you will be delivered from the spirit of infirmity in the form of diabetes or any illness showing up in your family. Israelites, you don't have to live a defeated life simply because you're an Israelite and the Most High put a curse on his people as a sign. You don't have to live a defeated life because of the sins of our fathers. If you're a part of the remnant, you can tell the devil to drown in the lake of fire and it will be done. 
That's the authority you have as a righteous person serving the most high in the spirit and in truth. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Israelites, you're learning about spiritual warfare in the spirit realm for you to take control over your life. There are some Israelites alive today that are living a great life despite the circumstances against our people. The reason the curses are not overtaking their lives, their heart is perfect towards the Most High. Like Job, the Most High placed a hedge of protection around them so that no weapon that is formed against them shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. The Most High is with the remnant of his people that have returned to him. Despite of what it may appear to be in these last days, the Most High is directing the path of his people until this day. Our journey is a personal relationship with the Father, not a religious one size fits all. Everyone have a journey that is tailored for them. You have to seek the Most High to establish that personal relationship. Anyone who wants to be free will engage in spiritual warfare. The Most High will make a way for the righteous. Israelites, it may appear as if the Most High has been silent in the lives of his people. If you serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth, you will see how the Most High intercede in the lives of the remnant daily. Don't let the signs of the times deceive you into believing the Most High is not with his people. The Most High is with the remnant of his people that have returned. Everyone who have a relationship with him are his witnesses. Israelites, take heed to the knowledge the Most High is making available to you. Spiritual warfare is a skill that you need to master to overcome every devil coming against you. When you know how to fight back, you will know how to get the devil to flee. Israelites, give the Most High the opportunity to deliver you from spiritual bondage. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk 